Hello and welcome back. Now do you remember last week that I did a review on this CRT M6 microphone? This is the standard microphone that comes with the CRT 6900 November and I compared it with a very cheap KPO microphone and found that the KPO actually sounded quite a lot better. Uh, this one for some reason just sounded quite muffled and in fact when I'd used this on the radio people had commented and said to me that it sounded like I was uh, talking through a sock. <laughs> so I don't really want to sound like I'm talking through a sock so that's why I bought the KPO. Now since I made that video we've had a, um, a couple of comments from people coming on saying that their microphone sounds perfectly normal, sounds perfectly okay. And they couldn't understand why my one sounded, uh, sounded so poor. So what I did, I, I did a little bit of internet research and oh, about five or six pages into Google. I found a thread on some forum, I can't remember, but I found a thread discussing the same problem that I had with this uh, microphone. And someone said that for some reason they have started to started putting uh, a very thick piece of foam inside the microphone just behind the grill for some reason. Some, I think the earlier microphones didn't have it. And uh, yeah, other people had to complain that their audio wasn't so good, so that they suggested a quick mod whereupon you uh, just whip the whip the back off. It's only three screws, and take out take out the piece of foam. So I thought, well, you know, that's what I'm going to do because so it's got all of the buttons on it, which is quite handy, I suppose, if if you remember to use them. So that's what I'm going to do on this video. I'm just going to uh, take the back off, which I'll speed up for you, and uh, have a look inside, have a look at the element, and find out, you know how it all looks and if there is a piece of foam in there I'm gonna bloody well remove it <laughs> okay bear with me then I'm now gonna take the back off in high speed so that's the uh, three screws removed and we'll have a look inside well, there you go oh, oh straight away you know it seems to uh, get that in camera yeah it seems to be pretty decently well made actually little circuit board here obviously with the uh, with the wires and I imagine they're for the uh, the buttons that are on the uh, front of the faceplate there so yeah there's the there's the element and I don't know if you can make it out I don't have to cap but I can straight away I can see that there is um, some foam in there so I'm very carefully Gonna try and there's nothing there's nothing holding the uh, the element in. It's just sort of like sitting there. Yeah, sure enough. That's the uh, dynamic element, which pretty standard. It's not got too many uh, apertures around it. And here, there you go. Oh look, there you go. That is the uh, the thick piece of foam, and that is really dense. If you look at that. You really can't see through it, and it does have a um, a mesh shield, which I'm going to leave in place. There is actually a mesh shield in there. So, other than maybe um, sort of any for dampening reasons, because this isn't glued in, which is a bit odd. But you know, why the hell did they put that in there? That is really thick when you've already got a mesh kind of sock shield, if you like. So we're going to uh, take that out. Disperse with that. Let's uh, put the element back in. Yeah, it's a bit. It is a bit loose, actually. I can sort. Of, so I think what I'm going to do is just get a little bit of epoxy resin there, and uh, just put a little bit of uh, resin just on the side, and uh, see if I can secure that, make that uh, a little less uh, chance of that rattling around. So bear with me, and I'll just do that. Okay, there we go. I think you can just about make out. I've just put a little dollop of uh, resin on there, sort of epoxy glue. So I think I'll just put it all back together, and uh, by the time I do that, that should uh, that should be hardening. And then uh, yeah, I think I'll go on air on the 6900 and give it another go. But you know, look at that. You can't you know, you can't you can't see through it. Really, uh, and seeing this out, I was so very s sort of small holes in the dynamic element there of that uh, microphone. I think that was probably the reason why it sounded 
quite so muffled. But anyway, going to put it back together now and then uh, let that dry and then we'll do some on-air testing. But before I do that, what I'll do is I'll, I'll link in a little bit of a clip from the, uh, the test before. Uh, probably on FM what I did before and you can hear how it sounded before and hopefully it's going to sound a lot clearer according to what I've read anyway. But uh, anyway, let me, let me put this back together off camera. Okay, out in the shed shack. I'm going to repeat the same test as before. Going on FM, going on channel 30. Uh, it seems to be quite clear, so that's the one we're going to use. And I'm uh, going to be using the M6 for that piece of foam we moved on the 6900N. And I'll receive it on the Alinco back upstairs in the attic. And uh, we'll see if it's made an improvement. This is the uh, M6, M6 the standard microphone that come with the uh, CRT, the 6900 November. And I had some good reports on FM with this, actually. I didn't really get any, uh, any really bad reports on FM. It was sideband that people said that it sounded a little bit scratchy and a little bit weak. So hopefully this is coming across rather nice, uh, rather nice on FM. The audio test of the standard CRT. M6 non-amplified microphone on the 6900N and talking into it approximately two inches away my normal talking voice that I would use on radio and uh, hopefully with that uh, rather nasty thick piece of foam removed hopefully the audio is coming out a lot sharper and uh, not sounding quite so muffled hopefully there's no voice splatter on the microphone what I shall do now is do a worst case scenario I will now blow onto the mic and see how that sounds so that is blowing directly onto the microphone so I'd expect a little bit of splatter anyway just an audio test audio one two three four audio 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 so I've just uh, listened back to that recording myself and I think this microphone sounds a lot better it's certainly less uh, less muffled it's, uh, it's got more clarity of the audio uh, higher treble I would say not really sure why they put that great lump of foam in there do you know what I mean uh, no idea other than the fact that the element itself was kind of wedged between the casing the plastic casing of the mic and they could have just used a little bit of uh, hot snot to uh, to fix it in so I think that kind of you know that concludes it I think I think if you've got one of these microphones then you may uh, you may want to try just removing that piece of foam altogether and gluing the element or possibly you know putting in a thinner piece perhaps now whether it sounds as good as the the KPO I'm not sure I, I still think the KPO uh, might have a slightly uh, more rounded rounded tone to it but certainly an improvement so I think that's a good uh, good little mod that. Any hum that you heard, by the way, on the audio was that I disconnected the antenna and I ran it into a dummy load, as I did on the first test, because I thought that was probably the fairest thing to do. So it did does create a little bit of hum to the audio as the dummy load eats up the output of the uh, 6900. So there you go. That's a, just a little uh, mod video. Hope that's useful if you've got one of these microphones. And uh, cheers. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for some more. And I'll catch you all on the next one. Stay safe.